So here's the piece we're going to start with. This is the gun arm. And uh, all of these, what you see right here in front of you is all separate pieces that all have to be joined together into one watertight model so that we can cut and key it uh, to 3D print it without, um, you know, hassles. And you really got to cut and key this one because there's detail on every end. And we don't want to have to deal with supports if we don't have to. So here's pretty much what we do. You select the background piece. You, you get uh, the Boolean modifier. You change it to Union. And then you use the eyedropper to select the piece you want to join to it. And you click Apply. And then you've got to delete the uh, duplicate that the modifier creates. Um, you really want to make sure you get rid of that because it'll create problems when you try to uh, put it in the slicer. And I'm going to speed up things from here because if you had to sit and watch 300 Boolean modifier um, joints, you'd probably go out of your mind and uh, I don't want that. Um, but I have to say, I really think that they uh, must have done some work on the Boolean modifier for 2.8 because I had pretty much no problem with any of this. Everything joined together without any issue. Um, in earlier models, uh, in earlier versions of 2.8 and even 2.79, I would have to fiddle with models sometimes to get them to join correctly. I'd have to rotate them a little bit or flip them end to end, uh, do any number of things uh, just to get them to join correctly. And uh, there was none of that in this. I was afraid with all of these millions of little pieces it would cause me a problem, but it certainly did not. It went together easy as pie. And I don't know if you can tell because we're going so fast here, but when I have several um, models stacked up on top of each other that I want to join together, um, I'll take the bottom one and join it to the one that's on top of that, and then I'll take those two that are now one and join that to the one that's on top of that, and so on until we've joined everything. Um, and maybe because I did it in such a logical manner, it helped the Boolean modifier. I don't really know that for sure, but you know what? It's... I couldn't just be happier that it that it worked smooth as smooth as it did. Everything um, I was really dreading this one, quite frankly, because I thought it was going to be a nightmare. But it really wasn't. I got to hand it to the Blender guys, or you know, just fate, because it worked out really, really well. And we're almost done. Just a couple of little pieces left to join here, and um, then we'll take a peek inside the model, and uh, I'll show you. That it, how well everything joined. Um, you can use perspective and then you sort of just roll inside the model. And there are other ways to do it. I could have gone into edit mode and just, you know, hid half of it. But this was just easier. Okay, and... Oops, wrong one. There we go perspective and you just roll into it and you can see everything joined perfectly I like to take a peek inside make sure everything's cool and it certainly was so um, next we're gonna go on to cut cutting and keying it and this one you really had no choice because there's detail everywhere there there's really no part that you could put flat on the bed um, so uh, here we're just adding a box Oops, we got to center the model. I like to use the X and Y coordinates to make sure that the model is as close to centered as I can get it. Um, we added a box, and we're just going to use that as a cutter. Um, now I'm just resizing it so that it will encompass half of the model. And we're just checking things out. There's a little cylinder in each one of those, and I wanted to get it as close to half of that as I could. So that's why I just rotated a little bit. And um, we're going to save this with the key in it, with the cutter in it, rather. And then we'll uh, use the Boolean modifier already set to deference. We'll select the cube. There we go. We'll apply the modifier. And then we'll delete the cube. And we'll save as. Very important to save as in this. Right? There we go. We're saving as, and I'm going to put a 1 by that so I know it's side 1. Now we got a little cleanup to do. Some of the collection stuff is left over from the main model. I, I, I've saved it into its own file, so I don't need those anymore. Just want to clean it up, keep things nice and neat. We're going to name that as 
side one so that when I append the other half to it, it's easy to figure out. Save it, and we're going to go back to the original model with the key still in it. Very important. Select those four corners, drag it over so that the middle is still in the center exactly where it was. Splits the model perfectly in half. Okay, select the model, go to the Boolean modifier, already set to difference. Select the cube. We're going to select the cube. <laughs> there we go. Hit apply. <clears throat> and now we've split the model perfectly in half again. Okay. And then we'll delete that cube. And we're going to save as. Very important to save as. Right? And then we got to do that same cleanup again to get rid of the collection stuff. And um, rename the model to side 2 and we'll save now I like to work inside one for some reason it, it doesn't really matter which part you want to work in it's the same difference but now we'll append side two into side one so that we can do the key and since you haven't moved anything look it comes in perfectly into position so I'll hide side two and now we're just gonna add the cube that will make the key and now we're just fitting it so that it'll it'll perfectly go inside Adjusting it a little bit here and there, getting it set up, and now I'm adding the. Um, oh, okay. We're just we're still adjusting the uh, the key a little bit to make sure that it fits, and then we're going to add the 0.15 of a millimeter. So you want to cut the slot for the key slightly larger than the actual key, otherwise it's not going to fit. You're going to have to sand down the key to get it to go in there. It's a pain in the butt. So leave yourself just a little extra room. And you will have to um, experiment with a little bit on your machine. With your filament and your printer settings, it might differ. Maybe you'll need a little more, 15 millim 0.15 of a millimeter. Maybe you'll need a little less. Um, now I'm doing the other side, the same thing. So now we have all three parts in one file, right? I'm going to delete everything but side 2. I'm going to turn it flat so that it's ready to print. And then I'm going to save, save it as side 2. Now we save it and we open up side 1, which has got the whole thing in it still. Unhide, there's side 1. Now we're going to delete side 1 and side 2, and we're just going to save the key. And I save the key um, with the flattest part down to the bed, so it will adhere better. All right, now we're going to open up and go back to side one. And we'll um, delete side two and the key. And we're just going to save side one. And there you go. So after taking a closer look at this part right here, I've decided that we got a problem and I am going to have to use supports in four areas. These little gun turrets here are floating in space and without some kind of support underneath them, it's going to be a mess. I tossed it in Cura and if you look at it here, here, let me go down through the layers right as we build up, Bink. that is in midair. These little, the little base of those turrets are in midair, and it would just not work out well. Um, so, what I did, wait. is I put little, uh, little, I, bu I built little supports myself underneath each one of them. And um, if I go down through the layers, you can see, bink, that's really all I need to do. All I need to do is support the very bottom of it. Because um, once, once the very bottom is supported, it'll support the rest of the layers. And it should be fine. And I print really slow. Um, and I turn the fan speed up. And the bullseye fan duck makes a world of difference for me. Um, and oddly... Everything else will print fine. Um, if you look at this front piece here, look at the way it, it, it just 
seals up fine. The, even this piece here, watch how it builds. It's just going to build out, up, and over. And it will print fine. Everything else will print absolutely fine without a problem. Now, there is one thing I'm a little less than thrilled about. Um, there's the key slot. And if you look at the first layer, let's see if I can get it. There we go. The first layer, it's going to go across. It's going to go lengthwise for the key slot. And I really wish I could get it to go across the shorter way so that there would be less sag. But, like I say, <coughs> I print slow and I turn up the fan speed and so it should be fine. Um, but you might be asking, why do I bother to make the supports myself, right? Why do I go in here in Blender? Open reset one. There you go. This this is what I did, right? I just took a, I made a little box. I can I I, I made po made it point five forty five of a millimeter wide on the y axis, um, and that, that's so tiny, but yet it's just enough to support this bottom part here. Um, but why make supports myself, right? Cura has an automatic support feature, and it will do it because it, you can't just support one piece, right? I just want supports in these four areas. Now, I know there's a support blocker, and I could set it up to cover up, you know, like almost the entire back half of the model and then maybe get in there and cover that. Um, but to me, that is a bigger pain in the butt than just going into Blender and making these little bits and joining them. Um, it was easy. It took me less than a minute to, to do all of this and then just remake the STL and drag it in and I'm good. Um, and this will print fine. So I would prefer to hand make my own supports because I can put them when and where I want and um, make them easy to clean up. Um, so I'd rather do it myself. Uh, and I know the, the, the Cura supports might even be a little thinner, but I find that these snap right off. Um, so I'd rather do it myself. But yeah, I had to give in. I had to make supports on these four areas. Well, hey, nothing's perfect, right? Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please like subscribe and hit that bell so you will get to see the rest of the videos on this project when they come out.